Hey guys, it's Lava Whale here, and I just want to do something that the uh, community has been asking for for a while, and that is to do an instructional video. Uh, most people have been asking me just to show my style of fireballs and afflictions and such, but I figured I'd go over through every spell I feel like I mastered, which is all of them except Fireball 3, which I'll show you my style, even though it's terrible. Hi, <laughs> Wolfie. Even though it's terrible and not consistent, and I can't do the pushback too. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, you can uh, you can go ahead and turn back now. But the other thing I wanted to go through was also my uh, long-term missions. So one of the best ways to make money in this game is make sure you log in every week at least once to collect your long-term missions. You can see here, I have so many missions, but you can see how many long-terms I have. I have actually 18 of these fishing missions, and right now... They're about all about 23%, except maybe the first two, which are a bit higher because I used to fish, you know, randomly just to collect materials for potions and such. I'll show you how to do the fishing one as efficiently as possible. Uh, I'll show you how to do the public events one as fish efficiently as possible. Also the scav killing. Um, I won't go through everything on the scav killing, only the three that are the most difficult, or four actually, which would be the um that would be the spike pistolers the scav knight scav buckler and the um i believe the bucket scav and sniper scav can sometimes end up on that list as well if you're doing dungeons and quests and stuff regularly you tend to fill out the rest of them pretty organically so you can kind of spike all of them up doing these the uh, strategy that i'm about to show you today and then you know naturally the rest of them will fill out and you'll be able to turn it in um there's not much to the collection one other than just making uh quick rounds around each of the zones and collecting as many of the harvestables as you can there are definitely places to collect them better and places to avoid where they don't tend to spawn or they don't spawn at all uh but you know that's something you kind of got to figure out for yourself by the time you're even halfway through this uh, quest here you'll probably know exactly how that goes uh the i'll also show you the critter capture it's pretty simple um though this is one i collect usually eight to ten of them at a time and then just i can clear them all out within three hours pretty simply uh the other thing you can do is what i do here and that is when i'm working on my long-term fishing quest i try to do a bit of it in a day and then and then you can finish these five fishing quests here which are all like whole things based and fish weight, stuff like that. And you can turn five of them in and then collect the next five and turn them in again the same day. That means if you go fishing towards the long term, once every two days, you can also turn in 10 quests for free. But that's it so far. Let's, uh, let's get into it. So I'm just going to try and do them in, uh, in some kind of order. We can do kind of like the arcane spells. So first arcane spells obviously arcane ray. It's pretty simple. Just got to do make sure the loop goes through nice and flat. These two are somewhat parallel. I usually leave this line a little bit short because when I do the arcane blast, I I just put a V that goes just under that, about as t deep as this one is, and then comes up on this side. So here's arcane ray. Uh, rave time. Okay. Then there's Arcane Blast, which is the exact same spell. You got a little V here. There are some shortcuts to it. I'm not very good at them, so I won't be showing them in this video. Here's an Arcane Blast. Uh, let's do a Polymorph. So Polymorph looks like this on the stone, which usually doesn't even cast for me, but that worked out this time. You want to do the shortcut. It's pretty simple. It's just a bow. You're going to do just that right here, and you'll get a, you can get a perfect cast off it, which doesn't matter at all. Um, so there's your polymorph. Um, obviously, mana shield is supposed to look something like that. Pretty silly that you would ever draw it that way, since you can literally do the same thing by just going line and doing a little swirl in the middle. So you can spam it if you want, but it's kind of a useless skill to spam. Um, all right, let's go with... I'll do the teleport and the resurrects now. So the teleport I use is the double loop, which is just pretty simple. Try and keep this line nice and flat, add in two loops near the middle, and you'll get teleport. There's also the double flat line for teleport, 
which is just literally try and get them as flat as you can, similar-ish lengths, and uh, try and get them on top of each other, really. Now, let's do it again. I know I don't know why it works, but it works. Some people do the infinity sign, which is just doing that and then put a line through it. That works pretty well as well. That that's one that's very consistent, just like the double loop. The, the double flat line doesn't work as often as you'd hope. And uh, so, and then for my resurrection, some people have very different ways of doing it. Some people even do just an O with the line through it. I don't think that works that well. Um, and since I cast triplicity pretty often in the beginning of fights, I tend to do this from my armrest here and just do a little three backwards, put a line right through the middle. And then for the second part, you can be pretty loose with the second part. It's supposed to look like this, but you can just do that quickly and it'll work fine. And then for this part, I just do a little loop like this and put two little Mickey Mouse ears on it. It's supposed to be Affliction, and I'm pretty sure one of them's like a diamond or something weird, like with a line. It's super bizarre that they ask you to do that when when it's so inefficient. Um, just to keep in mind, when you do any kind of teleport or uh, resurrection or triplicity spells, after you finish the first part of the spell, the 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 start of the uh, ritual, the other spells, the other parts of the spells are going to be extremely, extremely loose like you it's of all the spells in the game they become the simplest to to just kind of wing it and it'll work like uh even the teleport you just saw me using so if i use the double loop this one is supposed to be like this so i'll ruin it oh <laughs> it still even works then um and then the last one's supposed to be like a pitchfork i just do a quick y like that um so each of the teleports here so we can do, um, this is obviously the one I just showed you, uppercase P, pitchfork, that's going to be Fellowship Court. Um, we can go on to, this is going to be, I just do two lines like that. This one's going to be Rainforest. Um, I'm like trying to remember them as I'm doing them. Uh, there's only a few of them that I tend to use regularly. Uh, this one is... The other one with the backwards little F thing is going to be the, um, that'll be Cutthroat Forest. And uh, then we got the diamond ones, so that would be Diamond Hourglass is going to be, this is going to take you to um, Whole Things Basin. Then if you're looking for Vulcan's Point, that one's pretty simple as well. This one's going to be a diamond. And then you're going to add your little pitchfork on there. Is it a pitchfork? It is a pitchfork, isn't it? Yeah. I'll take you to Vulcan's Point. Um, those are probably the most common ones. Uh, there's one that, that kind of eludes a lot of players. And I have to give credit to Mishka here. He, post, or he posted this in one of his videos. And I thought it was pretty ingenious. I'll show you his little shortcut. Because there's a problem. If you try and do Hidden Garden, you tend to end up in Whole Things Basin. Because they have, in Whole Things Basin, they use the Hourglass, which is, it's going to be a flat line in the middle, and then kind of a curvy line on the side. So it's not like a perfect little Hourglass, but as long as you keep the middle flat, you can be pretty loose with the rest of the spell. Um, but if you want to get to Hidden Garden... It has this weird little ladder, but if you, you can tell, if I do like my hourglass, it's got close shapes in it. Like I know it's not perfect, but it's similar enough that if you draw that shape exactly like it is on the on the spell totem or the teleporter, it is going to send you to whole things almost every time. That's pretty odd. But anyway, uh, so the way that Miska does it is uh, a capital. N, which it's going to look like this. I don't know why it works. Well, I just ran out of room age reagents, but I don't know why it works so well, but it does. Um, I've, you know, I've messed with it both ways. You can do it normal N, or you can do it kind of like a backwards N like this. I don't know how I can get possibly get frost out of that, but 
anyway, um, so that those are the teleport and resurrection spells. Uh, I'll do a quick triplicity as well. This is your level 30 talent. I'll do my little three. Sometimes I'll make this a little spiky if I want to be a little more precise at the start of boss fights, make sure I don't actually cast a teleport. Um, that's what I do. And I, this is this one you could be so loose with. It's crazy. Like I'll just, this like a shitty little bow tie. It'll work perfectly. As long as you get the first spell, the second one is just so easy to cast. It's, it's silly. So don't really worry about the the second and third half of any of the ritual spells because they are extremely loose with their interpretation of what you're drawing. Um, all right, let's so let's go through the the rest of the spells. Let's start with the frost. There is the M, which so many people say they have a hard time casting. It is pretty simple. You want to do the line up, but when you when you do the rest of it, you want this to not reach past the halfway point. So if you like do a deep M like that. Or even just halfway it's not going to work but if you do it a little above halfway you can be pretty loose with this one and it'll work uh, the other one a lot of people have trouble with is the frost lance frost lance i've actually <laughs> spent a lot a lot of time trying to master frost lance spamming with my compass because you can spam it if you grab your compass right after you cast it because normally it gives you a little bit of a cooldown. <laughs> and of course you can do that silly thing. Um, so the easiest thing about this is you do the line and you want to make sure this arrow is wide. Like a lot of people try and do like this perfect arrow like that and it doesn't work. But if you do it nice and wide and like not, you want your angle to be kind of like this, not tight down or wide out and you can be pretty loose with the arrow if you if you do it wide enough like i just do kind of a little rainbow above it um but if you're trying to be a little more precise you can actually do the arrow like that uh we can do frost 2 frost 2 has quite a few different uh different tricks to get it the original way to do it is of course the f like that uh, the way most people do it is the capital P, which you want to come up, make a nice, nice round loop and come to about the middle of the spell. And then there is the candy cane version, which the spell is, spell is trying to read this line, this line, and this point, not so much this line here, but this point on the spell. So making that P you're hitting all these points they're looking for, which is actually, I think this point, this point, and this point. So when you make a capital P, you're hitting all the requirements to cast the spell. Um, but if you do the candy cane, you can hit all those same points as well and cast it just fine. And you can see I'm not casting this perfectly. All my lines are a little bit wonky. Like you can even see this is kind of, eh. <laughs> and it casts it just fine. Frost 3, this is another one that eludes a lot of mages. Um, I have to give credit to Overrated for teaching me how to cast this. Um, I think I do a little bit differently from him. I'm not 100% sure, but um, he taught me how to do it. And I've been teaching a lot of people because my, my way is fairly consistent. I'm able to use it on boss 2 to slow him down before he can murder people quite, quite consistently. And uh, I don't really pop at it anymore. So for me, I use an armrest. My, my wand, if I'm just holding my controller normal, is about here. If I'm going to cast, I rotate my wrist forward like this. But this is very different. I actually bring my elbow in and lift it. And I bring it to about here. So my wand is completely sideways now. And the reason I do this is it makes it much more, much more fluid to cast. And it um, doesn't make it quite as difficult to put that 3d line in that everybody has the issues with the 3d line if you theoretically it should be something like this well i mean that's a shortcut for frost but technically it's something like this with a 3d line going through it like that very difficult to do like i spent hours and hours trying to master that nothing ever came and then overrated showed me that i should switch flip my one on its side and it just clicked so what i do is i bring it up here and you, this is going to look a little weird to some people, but it works very well. So I just do a quick loop like that. This doesn't even look like a P or an F or anything. It's a little tiny, like, kind of like a sewing needle 
the head of a sewing needle right there. And then I just put a line straight through. And it doesn't have to be that ac that close. The biggest thing, and this, this goes to credit to overrated right here. The biggest thing is that this line is about as long as this line. The intersection point is important, but not as important as this line being the same distance or pretty close. Then the second thing you have to remember is if the spell, this is about flat on the spell. You need to make your angle just slightly down from flat. Sometimes I'll even do a little bit of a rainbow and it'll still work. But uh, that's that's what you're kind of aiming for is a slight downward angle. And uh, the nice thing is since I'm casting sideways and when I do the line, it's very easy, very organic. I am just, I am just swiveling my elbow and... Uh, yeah, it makes it very, very clean. You'll you'll get the muscle memory very quickly practicing it this way, and uh, it'll be very consistent when you're in the middle of a cast, in the middle of a fight, and then suddenly needs a someone needs a frost three for the boss. You can quickly just rotate your arm and just zip, boom. Now it doesn't matter how quick, big you make the spell; you just want to make sure the the lines are pretty consistent. You can see, I mean, this one even, this one is a little bit longer. Still going to work. So I divided it pretty well. You can see, that was a pretty wonky line. I mean, none of these lines look good. This, I'm making a whole loop here. Still works. Perfect cast. So this is probably one of the easiest ways to do it. I know, I'm pretty sure Jin, Jinji, who is known to be one of the best Frost 3 casters in the game, uses a very similar method. But he comes in very close like this, like my controller's up next to my face and uh, you can draw it really tiny still get frost threes you can since you're drawing it so small you can kind of spam the spell not an effective dps uh attack since it does very similar damage to fireball two and uh but it's not nearly as consistent so fireball one we'll move on to the fireballs fireball one very simple, draw a straight line, come to about, you know, 25% up the, the line and just do a little oh, 45 degree line down. Now the only use of this spell is uh, hitting targets that are far away that are priorities that just need to be hit. For example, uh, Davra Grubin, whatever his name is, from the, uh, the um, abandoned mines, he's got the spikes in the air. Now this travels much faster than any uh, fireball two, so you can actually aim up there and nail a spike and bring it down for your tank. Um, that's usually the only, or you know, pulling a mob. Sometimes I'll use in the mines as well when you're trying to pull those far away mobs that are all stacked up, and you want to kind of get a long line of shots at them. So you can fire it off because it not only does it travel faster, it travels much further because the spells are based on how long they're actually in the air and then they dissipate not it not um not how far they travel so then there's the fireball two which everybody knows is super wonky when you draw it normal but it works you can get easily get a perfect cast this way because perfect cast is when you when you do i believe 90 percent of the spell perfectly at least um so it's very easy to get perfect cast when you do it the original way then there's the the looping b then there's the pretzel method Looks like a pretzel. Works pretty well. Then uh, there's two different paperclip methods. There's the King Me paperclip, which he does, I believe, backwards like this. Let me see if I can do it like him. Oh my gosh, Fireball One. I don't. I honestly can't get the backwards one to work as well. Uh, I do the, like the, the front side. That is very similar. It's almost like uh, if pretzel and paperclip were kind of being merged together. So mine looks kind of like a backwards six or a backwards capital G. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, but this is the one that I use to spam my fireballs. And that is quite simply. So make sure the first line goes up. You loop down nicely. This part, this little edge here, I can come out so far as long as I come back in and make this line meet the back at some point it will uh it'll cast just fine you can get a lot of perfect cast doing it this way 
you can see they're not that consistent like I'm not doing it perfectly every time they're similar they're not exactly the same but as long as I'm hitting the back of that spell with that middle line I'm gonna get I'm gonna be getting perfect cast pretty much every time the perfect cast gives you like 10% more damage per fireball which is very useful um, I have different ways of casting fireball sometimes I do it on the side like this if I'm doing rotation mage because it's just easier for me to draw my eight balls on the side um, so if I do that you'll see a very different fireball not that different but it's less consistent for me I can't cast quite as fast that way um, when I'm doing this all from an armrest So that's what my rotation looks like. It's not nearly as good as Vampires or Richlith, but if I need to be the Affliction Mage, I can I can handle that pretty well. Um, then there's Fireball 3. I said I would do it, even though I'm terrible at it. Uh, there are a lot of shortcuts for that one as well. I am not proficient at any of them because it's a useless spell. It's mostly just for show. Frost 3 is good because you can use it on bosses uh, or any mob out in the open. But Frost or Fireball 3, virtually useless. Very, very flashy though. So, this is how I draw mine as I just do the capital B like it's supposed to be. Um, but the O is pretty far out from each other. Oh, let's see, didn't work. O's out far from each other. Do a little rainbow behind them. That was a perfect cast. It looked the same to me as the last one. Um, it does do significantly more damage than a Fireball. But nobody can spam that as fast as they can spam like three extra fireballs. It's just not efficient whatsoever. Uh, cool, cool looking spell though. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the afflictions. Uh, the simplest one, of course, is affliction one. Very, very forgiving spell as long as you get the basic shape. Um, I was taught um, about a year ago by a guy who could telecast this stuff all day. He was incredible. I forget his name. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, but his most important advice that he gave me for Affliction and Affliction 2 was one, to master your Affliction because Affliction, being able to cast Affliction regularly with the normal shape it requires is a very useful tool because the first angle that you draw which would be this one right here is going to be like the basis of your spell if this is at a good angle nice clean angle then the rest of the spell the, the spell should work every time that angle is good you can kind of get pretty sloppy with the rest of it it'll still work see now if you can do that angle well when you do your affliction twos which i use the eight ball method since none of the other other methods work for me um except maybe peel's method but i i don't have permission to share that one um it would go it's basically the same shape boom 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 and then you add a little circle around it right then other people they use the the registered mark which is just it looks it's actually a b but it you know kind of meshes in with the circle and that you know works for them doesn't really work for me yeah, there it goes uh, that one works for a lot of people. A lot of people say that one is a little more accurate, so they use it in the rotation to make sure they never accidentally pop. Uh, I don't know anybody that casts that one very quickly in the rotation. So you, I don't know any of the high-end rotation mages that use that, that version. It's just more of a consistent one for beginners. Uh, eight ball, I think, is a little more fluid. And there's a few other versions that other people use that they can cast extremely fast. I know Richlith uses uh one of the old methods and he can cast it extremely fast so i mean it's mostly what you can do um what you know what feels more comfortable for you but i'll be teaching you the eight ball which is i rotate my wand like this so this is my controller nice flat I use the default for the wand by the way um rotate forward like this turn to the side and then i because it's just easier for me using my wrist to do this first angle so it just makes it a little smoother for me Draw. I know, doing great right now. So make sure that angle is fairly smooth going into this curve right here. This, I believe, this first line is like the most important, is because it kind of 
sets the uh, the angle for the spell, whatever it's trying to read. And uh, this one's fairly important as well in making sure the O is nice and nice and round. Um, but the most important is to make sure that the top is a little bigger than the bottom side. That makes sense. So you can kind of go a little bigger on the top side like that, and it's going to be a little more forgiving. You also want to make sure that this middle part here is a nice clean X shape when you're drawing it. That helps a lot with the cast. You can see I can start this line, the starting line, pretty high up in the spell. It's like not, not meeting at the bottom there. It still works just fine. It's the rest of the spell that seems to be more important. I'm not amazing at afflictions. I can kind of spam them when I'm having a good day, but um, I'm definitely more of a fireball mage. Um, let's move on. Of course, oh, knockback. So knockback's really cool. Uh, Sir Andrew actually taught me his his strategy for knockback, um, which is normal knockback is supposed to be, you know, the little three like this. For me, not very consistent. It's kind of hard to you know cast it nice and clean in the like in the middle of a fight. I usually cast from my wrist if I need to cast a knockback because I don't like lifting my hand and then coming back down and trying to find a nice comfortable place to start spamming my fireballs from. I lose a lot of DPS that way. But I had to learn a way to cast it from from my wrist here and that would be sir andrew's way which so there's also a 76 method which is like this usually not very consistent for me i know those were terrible not very consistent for me but sir andrew taught me if you do the same way i know it still looks like the 76 but going back and then this overlap right here makes it incredibly consistent incredibly forgiving I can get so wonky with these spells and it'll still work just fine. I can make the top different, you know, widths just fine. It's awesome. So I like, since that one is so forgiving, I can kind of whip it with my, you know, whole using, just moving my full, uh, my full forearm and kind of whip it without too much trouble. If I need to interrupt a, a, a mob that's, you know, healing up or something like that. So that's how I do it for my wrist. It's just a quick little whip like this. And I go back to my fireballs. Fireball, fireball, fire. Oh no, an interrupt. Oh, oh. pretty simple. Uh, like I said, that one, that little overlap here is crucial. This, for some reason, I think, I think it just is hitting more points that the, the spell really wants. So that little extra overlap, making this nice and nice and round, and the rest of it can be pretty darn wonky, and it works just fine. So for the last three spells, we're going to do a few that you don't really see very often. Um, one of them is fairly useful and very high in charge. You'll see a lot of mages do this, and uh, one to save themselves or save party members, and that is Decurse. Probably one of the easiest spells in the game. Uh, but there are some very crucial points that you need to watch out for to make sure it works right. So decurse is basically the start of resurrection without the line through it. So you can do a spiky version like this. You can do a three. Works great. Uh, the biggest parts of this is making sure you have a nice kind of width between these these starting points. So if you try and do it a little too little too oh seems to be working okay right now but if you're too in, doing it too wide like that it's not as consistent i found it is most mostly consistent if you just kind of shake your wand as you come down to kind of keep them at a even range between the the uh middle point and the top and bottom you want them to be kind of consistently placed uh, i don't know why people have a lot of problem with this but has never been a problem for me. Just a spammable spell. This will de uh, remove poisons from players and as well as uh, other nasty debuffs. Um, doesn't work on a lot of bosses. A lot of bosses have immunities, like spells that are immune to this kind of stuff. Uh, it does work, however, on some boss mechanics that basically are asking for musketeers or mages to decurse a player. Uh, I won't say exactly which ones, but there's a couple of them. 
So another useless spell. You, so this is the light spell. Um, it is useless because it used to be a mechanic in, in original Orvis. So you could, you had to hold a torch sometimes to walk through these very dark caves. And then one of the things you could do is have a mage throw their light spell and it would light up an area and it still does it, even though it's useless now, kind of fun. Um, you can also get a special item. This J is for Jester, comes off the Toman group next to the abandoned mine entrance. If you just keep burning that group, you'll find one pretty quick. Uh, one of them I found in two pulls. The other one took me about 30 minutes with a grinder. Um, this is just a fun little interaction, little toss back to uh, Jester, who is a supporter of the game. And it makes a pink light. Pink light. Um, if you're curious, you can actually triplicity your light spell and fill the air with lights. So for other players, these things will hang in the air longer. So you can really light up an area and have people going, what is that? That's so cool. And for our last spell here is the fireworks spell. So some people know some uh, shortcuts. I don't really know any shortcuts for it. I just do it quickly because I'm pretty used to it. It's that's just the simple shape of it. So the actual shape that you'll see on the rune, if it's still in the game, I don't even know if it is. It's going to be lined up like this, kind of an angled line down, and then a nice flat line in the middle, line down. You can get a little sloppy with this, but this has to be the general shape. And there's perfect cast, so it does more damage. Woo. Um, so I just kind of get pretty loose with it. The most important things, a lot of people have trouble casting this. The most important things to keep in mind are going to be nice parallel lines. So line here, this line has to be just at an angle. It doesn't have to be super drastic and it can be kind of you know forgiving if you're a little you know shorter like this or a little deeper. It's not gonna freak out if you do it that way. Um, then, the second, then the second line has to be parallel with the first. Come down to about the way, same place to start. Now this is the part that a lot of people seem to don't seem to quite get. So I always explain it this way. You want to cut the spell in half, nice and clean on this line. You're going to find the middle of this. You can kind of eyeball it from the left side. Uh, that's what I do. And you need to cut it perfectly in half. And then you take the very middle of this line, cut it straight down in half. So as long as those two are nice and clean, the rest of it's a little more forgiving. Like these have to be parallel. This has to have an angle. This has to be middle. This has to be middle. That's all you need to do. You can draw it smaller, be a little, you can see I didn't even attach some of those lines. Still works just fine. And if someone's having a wedding in game, you can set off some fireworks in the air. Just be like, hooray. Okay. So that's it for the spells. Um, I will now go over the uh, long trip quest. So, all right, so we're going to be going over the uh, scav kill long term quest. Uh, I'm only going to be going over the, I believe, the three that are the most important and another place where you can farm two more of them uh, just because they happen to be along the way. Um, one thing that does help with this is potting up. It's not it's not necessary it just makes things go a little bit smoother i'm going to show you without pots uh, but you can just imagine it takes maybe two or three less fireballs per mob to down them and move on so this is going to be the first starting area this is nomad site and flood rainforest which the spell is you do the teleport and you want to do the backwards f with the pitchfork and that'll bring you here um so every mob Every one of the scabs that spawns in this area past these, you know, scadrill, whatever they're called, uh, everything over here can spawn in as a spike pistoler, which is the infamous one that is the most difficult to find enough of to kill. So kill all the scabs here. That's the most important thing. Make sure you take out all of these bucket scabs, take out all the marksman scabs, and of course, take out all the spike pistolers. So I uh, I tend, to, when there's people here, I don't telecast as much because sometimes I hit stuff, sometimes I get in the way. But a lot of the stuff I do, hello. Uh, I use kind of my own method, but it's a variation of paperclip. <laughs> it's 
funny you mention that. I'm actually in the middle of filming a tutorial video on how to cast spells. <laughs> Um, well, it's hard to show people, but I'll, I'll show you, I'll just go slowly showing you with the tip of my wand here. Um, but, and I'll draw it backwards for you so you can get a better idea. So just watch the tip of my wand. I'll do it once and then I'll, I'll actually draw it while you draw it. So, um, doing it backwards here. I kind of start on the side here, come up, come up, loop, come down, kind of a loose loop here, but you got to make sure you, you bring it out and come in. And you cut through the middle of the spell and reach the back line, if that makes sense. So, you, like for me, I'll do it, I'll do it from your side here. I'll do it the way I actually draw it. I'll do it slowly here. Um, so line up, loop, come down, come back up, then then slide back in. Make sure the line cuts through the middle and touches the back. I'm being attacked. Yeah, so I sit down, I have an armrest. I highly recommend using an armrest when you're casting. It makes everything so much easier because it keeps your arm a lot more stable and doesn't make you punched forward or back through the uh through the um you know the spell and, and cause it to fail because it's three dimensional. If that makes sense. So I just kinda point my wand down as kind of deep as I can get my wrist to go while I'm on my armrest. And then I kind of just let the when I'm like drawing up, I let the uh, the natural motion it kind of makes when I'm drawing it small, kind of reset the the momentum, and that lets me kind of just keep doing it over and over and over. Yeah, uh, I'll give you my my YouTube. It's honestly, it's just lava. It's just lava oil. Um, there are a lot of other other videos on there and some tutorials on my like my scoundrel burn tile build that most people use right now. Uh, those are on there, and uh, the scoundrel build will help you with your do a lot more damage with a scoundrel. Uh, but I will be just posting this as soon as I finish. Um, oh, he's shooting you. Oh, it's because you're level eight. That's why. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, there's there's a little more detailed uh, version. I think the YouTube video has a link to the com community forum. It has the tiles on there, the recipes to make the tiles, and a few of the damage meters that show it breaking some pretty crazy numbers. Like, I did 101k damage per second the whole fight through the slime boss, which is a moving fight. And uh, was able to maintain the DPS because the rotation is so simple. Yeah, no worries. All right, I got to get going. Got to finish this video. Yeah, you too. So once you've cleared out all the scabs here, uh, I had to slow down a bit, helping out another player who was asking for help. Um, basically, once you clear this area out, uh, pretty easy as a mage if you can cast quickly. Uh, alternatively, you can do this fairly fast with a scoundrel and a first strike gun. That way you can burst them with a quick crit every single time. So as soon as I finish clearing this place out, first thing I do is going to be teleporting, which is diamond hourglass. This will take me to Holthine's Basin. And this is perfect because this is exactly the spot you want to start in every time. So there are going to be, so this will always change because there are different spawn or these spawns will come in as different mobs. Ignore these, very important. Ignore the ones with the squares around the triangles because these are enraged spike pistolers. They're useless. They don't help with any of the quest. What you want are the, I always check back here. Um, you want the regular triangles and they're always going to be like, take the teleport spot all the way to the exit. And they're always going to be on this side of that tree. Every once in a while, one will wander just a little past there. But you want to kill this guy, this guy, and where's our last one? There's always three. It might be one of those. 
one, two. So one of them tends to wander, and that's why I usually check behind that rock. I don't know if maybe I saw him and then he walked away. Yep, he did. Okay, so these are three. They all happen to just be the same mob. These can spawn back in as spike pistlers. So when you're doing this rotation, you're trying to be as efficient as possible. You want to come through here. I just telecast into each of them. They're all very squishy. Kill all three of the normal triangles that are on this side of that tree. Mount up. Start heading over here. Um, yeah, ignore everything over there. Doesn't matter. Now, ignore. You got a square over here with triangle, and there's a few in the back corner. Ignore those. Uh, I always kill the wolf as well because a wolf can drop eye worms, which are fairly valuable, and he's always here when I come through. But every single one of these one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that a seventh one? Did I miss? Anyway, every one of these guys can spawn in as a spike pistoler. So when I'm coming through here, I usually start telecasting from right here, and I'll just mow right through them. Definitely useful to have uh, uh, potions for this. This will significantly increase how quickly you can take these down. For your scoundrel, I honestly would just recommend throwing on a strength pot. Um, looks like that was all of them. Should collect my loot since you never know. Rotten finger, that's good. Um, anyway, so everything's cleared out here. Ignore these guys in the corner. There's a square around that one, a square around that one. I believe another one could spawn back there. I'm not 100% sure because they don't matter. Come over the bridge here, and these are going to be your next group. Wipe out all three of these. Because these bucket scavs sometimes are on your list as one of the ones that was kind of harder to finish. Then we have the buckler scavs. That's, these tend to be another one that kind of gatekeeps people from finishing that quest. That's why we do this whole rotation. Then I come down here. Then this, this can spawn as either three bucklers, three buckets, or any variation. So there's a bucket here, buckler here, and I believe there'll be a buckler behind the tree, or a bucket. There we go, bucket. Here's another one. And then I tend to move down here when I have a lot of the scav quests incomplete, like with a lot of missing spots. Because it just kind of makes the whole run a little smoother because I'm going to go through these enemies and then hit the teleport in the back, head back to Nomad's Hut. And that's the whole rotation. So I'll show you. Speed this part of the video up. Alright, so there are a few bears here. Sometimes I kill them because the, uh, they also drop rotten, rotten fingers and bloody flesh, which are very valuable for fishing. Uh, a little less so the rotten fingers, but the bloody flesh is fairly rare because they only come off of certain critter mobs like that. Uh, this staffer right here, staff, staff, bucket, they can all spawn in as bucket scavs, or they can all spawn in as these caster scavs. So if you are lacking in bucket scavs, which is sometimes one of the ones you need a lot of, uh, I would recommend just burning through these guys. All done. All right, so I will show you the whole rotation again at uh, at full speed. That way you can see how quickly you can go through this. Uh, usually takes me about five minutes to do a full rotation. So I will be speeding this up though, just so you don't have to spend five minutes watching. Also on my way back to the Nomad's Hut, I tend to go through all the stuff that's dropped. I usually keep my pet fed, so I'm looting everything. But I go through all the stuff that's dropped, and I clear out all the armor pieces that I've picked up on this path, because there's nothing to kill on this path. This is your only chance, you know, spend a little time doing something. Very important to keep your inventory managed, because you will fill up so fast doing this.
All right, so that is the full rotation for that. Um, so you know the basic rotation for these mobs. If I need knights, which is another one that uh, gate keeps people a lot, I will then change it up to cutthroat forest. Uh, sometimes I don't need the buckler or buckets or the little snipers over here or the um, the bucklers. And a lot of times I will end up doing just nomad's hut. Then I jump over to this flying high over there and kill the the two spawns for the uh, sniper scout or the the uh, um, spike pistolers. And then I will teleport out to cutthroat forest. Um, I'll usually use the actual teleport if I'm doing that because it's a little quicker. Then here's where you'll find the knights. There are three spawns here and they always have an extra mob with them. So usually just post up, no telecasting here and just. If you're in dire need of collecting knights, there is a second place you can go to, and uh, I'll add this to my rotation while I'm collect or when I'm burning through these quests. So all these mobs up here, they all have the yellow diamonds. They are all possible spawns for the knight scav. So you can come up here and just kill the knights that are spawned if you want. Or you can do what I do and just mow everything down. So that's pretty simple. Usually when I finish that, I'll then take my teleport. This is the Nomad's Hut teleport. Now I'm back out here and I can open up my inventory while I walk. Clear out any of these things that happen to drop. Pick up my inventory a little bit. It's pretty mess messy right now, but I figured I'd leave it this way because I have all the stuff for the fishing long term, which I'm about to go through with you. <laughs> all right. So for the fishing long term, you want to come to free fall here. Uh, two things or three things are required is going to be the fishing lure, uh, obviously fishing pole. And an extra fishing pole of a different type. This is the one that you get the abstract fishing rod from the long term fishing quest. Uh, it's kind of cool. Little Lego thing, I don't know. And a gel mirror themed. Um, so I'll come over here to the docks. We're going to head down. I'll speed this up for you. I don't like being disturbed when I fish, so I come over here. But someone's already here. I will go to the other side. Okay, so we're here. So I usually will come to the edge and then skywalk off slightly. I don't like accidentally moving myself and take off my mount because a lot of times, a lot of people don't know this, these sharks that you catch here will bite right when your line hits just below you. So I tend to slow down just a bit right when it gets to the end to make sure I can quickly whip up and catch it. I don't know why sharks do it. it seems to be the only fish that, that does that consistently, but it is really annoying when you waste a whole charge on your lure and you could have caught a shark with it. So um, the other thing you really want to get, and I don't have any on me right now, is going to be a fish scent attractor. The age fish scent attractor is significantly better than the regular one. Just invest in it. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of he headache. And uh, most importantly, the fishing lures are expensive. The eye worms are very expensive sometimes. Sometimes they can get over a thousand dram a piece. And you need about 120 of them to finish the entire quest if you're if you're being efficient with them. And uh, it takes a whole lot less fish than attractors if you do this whole thing right. So what I do, I sit down when I fish. So I will move my whole body forward, stand up, open my menu. And I sit back down. So I have my menu open here. It's up, kind of out of my way, so I don't have to see it while I'm actually fishing and I miss miss a tug on the lure. 
Um, when I fish for sharks, uh, I will go for a kind of medium cast. L that was a little short. Bring it in. I move both my hands when I'm when I'm reeling in. Makes it go faster and smoother. So I'll kind of do this mo motion with both hands. The wider you go, a lot more smooth it goes. Comes back in. Um, but that that changes a little bit during the actual execution. Uh, so let's do about a medium cast here. That was pretty good. That's about what you want to aim for when you're going for sharks, because when you have the fish center tractor on, that's about how far you have to go to get it about 80, 90% of the time. That's going to be your most efficient distance, which also most of the time won't require you to stop while you're reeling, which is very important. That, that saves you a lot of time. So when you're bringing it in, if you hook a shark and then, you know, your line gets red, you're going to have to stop, let it turn white, and then start reeling it back in again. Oh, did I really get a bite? That's funny. Okay. Um, I'll throw it a little further out so you can see the trick. So this is Mishka's trick. Uh, if you haven't seen Mishka's video, uh, this is how you catch fish very quickly. Uh, bad example here because I don't actually have a fish sand tractor on, but um, we'll see how hard it is to catch a shark without any attractor on. Bringing it in, bringing it in. Nice wide circles. Am I going to catch it right at the bottom? Nope. Let's go further. Or terribly. The further you throw, better chance you have of catching anything. Um, got that from Mishka as well. But it's not perfect when you don't have a fish center tractor on. It's still very difficult to catch just about anything. But the sharks bite all the time when you have a fish center tractor on. All right. So I'm back. Let's go walk out a little bit. Um, brought a fish set and tractor this time. So I'm gonna set up my menu again. It's up and out of the way. Take my fish center tractor. Usually you want to take that as so pretty much as soon as you're absolutely ready to go because it's that's gonna last 20 minutes. You want to be as efficient as possible with those 20 minutes. Now I've gone and gotten onto my shaman here. Um you can see my silly outfit actually has a really cool mask over it, but uh, you can't see it from this from my video perspective, so it just looks ridiculous. Anyway, um, so got my fish center tractor on, got my eye worm with feather and and rod and finger. I just have an excess of those, and it kind of helps a little bit with the chance to catch. I I don't know for sure, but I throw them on there just just uh, one to kind of get rid of all that inventory. So what you're gonna do here is. I've got this fishing rod on, got my lure with plenty of durability, and I put my little bone spur rod in the in the closest spot I can get very consistently to throw onto this tool belt spot. So this is Mishka's trick. Do a nice little medium cast here. That's a little bit longer than medium, so a much better chance I'm gonna catch something. Pretty much guarantees. There it is. So now it's so close, I can bring it all the way in without breaking my line and as soon as I catch it instead of waiting for that thing to fade you switch your rod that was way too far hopefully it doesn't bite early yep it bit early so this is the this is what you want to you want to avoid by doing medium cast is now my line's red I have to stop wait for it to fade reel in again it's going to go red again and I usually time my my reeling and I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well now that I caught that I'll switch again throw right away saving a lot of time. So I did another long pull so I can show you my my trick for um, how I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I time it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's been pretty good for me to make sure I don't snap my rod ever or snap my line ever. Uh, here's a medium cast, this is, little longer than medium. I kind of like going for a little longer than medium because usually I don't have to ever stop reeling. Like this one was close. I, I had to stop just to make sure I didn't break it. Um, yeah, and this will happen sometimes. So you'd see my bone still on, but I switched. It doesn't happen that often. It's not a huge deal. Um, it'll it'll stall you for a second, no, no longer than, than it would normally stall you with just waiting for the timer. Uh, to fade so not a huge deal but 
If it doesn't happen, you're going to be saving a lot of time. So let's do another little medium cast here. That's a lot closer to the medium that I was aiming for. So sweep, sweep, sweep. Early, see, this is this is perfect. That's what you want every time. If you, if it was ideal every time, and then you can throw again immediately. This one's a little far out. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Not even close. Will happen sometimes. But usually, sharks like to bite pretty close to the edge. That's why I'm a little skywalked out here, is I can look down and make sure that I'm catching the sharks that are biting just under my feet here. This won't be fine. I can keep reeling all the way in. A lot of times I'll stop reeling with my right hand just so I can point at the rod. So if this ever happens, you want to just keep whipping it up while it's coming in. So the line will disappear. You won't see a splash. But if you're consistently doing feel reels, pull. Feel, feel reels, pull. Feel reels, pull. You're going to have a good chance of hooking it if it does it invisibly. And uh, it actually tends to come in faster. Like you don't get the slowdown on the reeling when that bug occurs, which can be kind of nice. Uh, honestly, I wish this was all bug free, but you know, can't always get what we want in Orbis. Um, but yeah, so that's the that's the trick for catching sharks, uh, and that's the fastest way. Uh, after some testing, I can do the whole quest in about six and a half hours, maybe if I'm if I'm being really efficient. Uh, you can like, hope for maybe six to seven, um, but it does go pretty fast as long as you're being consistent. Um, I know it's a, it's a lot. A lot of people shy away from this one because it's you know seventy five thousand pounds. But if you're being consistent, you're sitting here. You have the lures to keep going through. I usually come out with at least enough lures for uh, three or four potions, to then I go back just to drop off the weight. The, the sharks do tend to to you know collect up and you'll have a few stacks of it and suddenly you're going to be weighed down which is not a huge deal but um you know it's nice to have a little break in between to go back and do stuff but you can absolutely just fill up your inventory i don't do that because i don't commit to finishing the entire quest every time and i don't like my inventory at home my stash is just packed full i don't have room for these extra lures so i i make them kind of as i go um usually about five to six lures if you're going very fast is going to be how much you're going to need for each fishing pot so i tend to bring about 18 lures out uh if not a couple extra just to be safe and then three potions four potions i might go a little more uh all depends and a lot of times i bring a little excess of either either or just to make sure but if I get interrupted, someone comes up and wants to talk, and I've wasted my scent attractor, then I can have another one ready and just keep going. Uh, so the reason I popped onto my shaman here is you can see I'm not wearing any totems right now. And the reason I use it is because of the simple little UI bit here. And this is your fish scent attractor. You'll have no notification except right here that it's faded. Um, you can set a timer, which is great if you're, you know... <laughs> You want to be that efficient uh for me i just switch to my shaman take my totems off because they all sit right here and it's kind of irritating having them in my way um and then yeah so you can see it fading you'll see this start to like disappear and it's just a line like finishing off the ticking of it and i'll throw maybe one more line and then bring it in it'll be faded and i can drink up and go uh saves you a few extra lore charges because the only other way to really notice it is you'll see like maybe three or four times in a row you won't catch a shark, which is extremely unusual. Uh, the most I've ever gotten while doing medium casts is maybe two if I didn't catch a shark, and that's already unusual enough. I usually check to see if I've dropped a fish send attractor. Um, much better to just have your, your layout out and ready. Um, for the, I'll just do a quick overview for the long-term uh, public events quest. Make sure you open up the uh, armory which is uh, or armory.orbis.xyz. That's Arker's website. It has a lot of information about Orbis. Also has a public events feed, so you can see which ones are coming up. Uh, always prioritize Lambivora. That is going to be the fastest way to get this done because High Step has the portal event, which you can finish three to four times when it comes up just by jumping shards. Every time you finish the portal event on the top shard, usually it's pretty well known. People go to the top shard first, 
and they move down the shards and and they can do this event over and over and over and just get so much credit for this quest that the high step portion is virtually useless <laughs> that one will just kind of naturally happen it's the llama vora that is going to gatekeep you can see right here like these huge discrepancies between them because high step is just so much easier to just step out like here you can see i started just farming llama vora but it'd be so easy to step like back into high step and prioritize portal event a couple times and get way past my llama vora so prioritize llama vora every time uh, the easiest ones to do are obviously the castle piece and the crystal mine, the knight's fort. Some people don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. I sometimes just avoid it just and just go do a high step one or something because I don't think it's very fun. It's it's honestly kind of a pain to finish solo. And it's if there are people there, it can be a pain for other reasons, like too many mobs collecting up. Not It's, it's my least favorite of all the events. Um but yeah, so you can learn, you can kind of see the rotation in the public events feed, plan ahead, go there. I try and get work done, but like while the, while the event is charging up, like sometimes you're waiting there for seven minutes. Sometimes you're waiting there for, you know, for three minutes. Some time I spend uh, working on my writing for my job. Uh, yeah, so I think that's all of them. Um, oh, the critter capture. So very simply, I don't even have to go up there and show it. Free fall teleport. Start hitting all of the um, critters up there. I tend to have critter capture gun on one side and a harvester on the other because there's also the harvesting quest in Hull Themes Basin. Uh, you just hit every one you can find. One important thing to do is, or to note, is that they, they take a while to spawn, they stay there for a decent amount of time, and you're only going for the big ones. So be efficient with your, your critter capture horn. Move to the next one. Move to the next egg if it's nearby. You know, open that one up while the while the mobs are spawning. The big spawn, the the rare one, is always going to be the last one that spawns out of the group. So just waiting there and watching it, there could be nine birds that spawn. You're wasting a lot of time. Move on to the next egg. Blow the horn. Move. You can do a third one. Blow the horn and just be looking back at the the first one you hit to see if the, a rare spawned. If it didn't spawn. Keep on going. Just keep be as efficient as possible. Get as many eggs open as quickly as possible without missing your opportunity to catch that rare. You're going to be going about as fast as possible. Two, three hours. You can have that whole long-term quest done just in whole things. Go all the way down to Ocean's Edge, or if you if you want to be maybe a little more efficient, you can use some Rune Mage reagents. Just keep coming back to Free Fall. Head up this way, Free Fall. Head down that way. Uh, there's nothing down on Ocean's Edge. None of the eggs actually spawn on, on the last platform, so it's a little bit of a waste of time to go that far. Up to you. I'm a little lazy when I do this. I turn on some music, turn on an audiobook, and I just fly through the whole place, teleport back up at Ocean's Edge to Freefall, go back through. Just do it over and over and over. You're going to get that quest done so fast, you're always going to... If you haven't done it yet, you're going to feel silly because that quest is so easy to clear out. You get 65,000 dram. You get a bunch of bonus pet treats. You get magic purple dye. A lot of good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if there's any other content you guys want to see. Anything I left out. Any questions you have about any of these strategies, any of the spells cast. Happy to answer anything you've got. Uh, you can add me in game if you want to you want to go over in game i'm always happy to help people out who are interested in anything any of the content that i've done um but yeah let me know if there's anything else you want to see uh like and subscribe a very small channel it helps a lot and i appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it see you next time